On today's Smart 7, the debt toll rises in Israel, the US inches closer to a new speaker, and lots more. It's Thursday, the 12th of October. It's World Arthritis Day, and happy birthday, you, Jackman. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. The death toll from the Hamas attacks in Israel continued to rise on Wednesday as more bodies were discovered in towns and villages after the weekend's terror. There were now at least 1,200 Israelis dead with many more injured, but the death toll in Gaza rose sharply too. Israel continues to pound the Gaza Strip with airstrikes and mass troops on the border as it continues with its plan to destroy Hamas. Gaza's only remaining power station had to be closed on Wednesday as it ran out of fuel. Foreign Secretary James Cleverly visited sites in Israel on Wednesday and had to dash for cover when air raid sirens sounded. The UK's Defence Secretary Grant Shapps was backing Israel even as residents of Gaza struggled to cope with no power, food or water. Well every country has to act within international law, that is absolutely right. Now we support Israel's uh, right to defend itself um, but they will be defending themselves by going after those terrorists. The UN's Palestinian aid agency is urgently seeking funds to help those trapped in Gaza as the war between Israel and Hamas rages on. Liz Thurstel from the UN Human Rights Office says that it's a matter of real urgency to help those caught in the middle. We could almost say that it's an unprecedented situation. It's a cycle of vengeance and basically the people who pay the price are Israeli civilians and Palestinian civilians. Wednesday saw the Labour Party conference in Liverpool wrap up after a carefully managed event designed to prove that Labour are ready to be the next government. There were no major errors, nobody cancelled any high-speed rail lines and even though his speech was briefly interrupted by a protester, Sir Keir Starmer delivered a clear and hopeful message from the main stage. He spoke to Kay Burley on Wednesday and explained what the greater purpose behind his speech was. What I was trying to do was create an emotional connection with the future and to give people the sense that Uh, Things can renew, that um, wounds can heal, that what's broken can be repaired. Traditionally, other party leaders maintain a low profile during conference season, but after a shambolic Tory conference, Rishi has made a flurry of appearances this week. Labour's shadow education secretary, Bette Phillipson, isn't too impressed by Rishi's continued flouting of tradition. Well, the Conservatives just think the rules don't apply to them. There isn't a line uh, they won't cross, but we're focused on getting our positive message out to the country. I do believe people want a sense of hope and optimism and about the change that a change in government could bring about. After Republican Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy was pushed out of his position last week by MAGA Republicans, there's been a power struggle going on over who will replace him. Steve Scalise is the current major leader of the House and his rival is Chairman of the Judiciary Committee Jim Jordan, a Trump loyalist who has been making a mess of the investigations into Hunter Biden. Scalise won the internal Republican vote on Wednesday 113 to 99, but he's still got to get his nomination approved on the floor of the House and it took McCarthy 15 ballots to finally get elected. Steve says it's important to get things back to normal as soon as possible. We have a lot of work to do, uh, not just in the House for the people of this country, but we see how dangerous of a world it is and how things can change so quickly. Uh, We need to make sure we're sending a message to people all throughout the world that the House is open and doing the people's business. With the world distracted by events in Israel, Russia has continued to strike civilian targets in Ukraine. A missile hit a school on Wednesday, killing at least three people in the town of Nikobol. There are also question marks over what appears to be a sabotage of an underwater gas and communications pipeline between Finland and Estonia. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg spoke to the media before a two-day meeting of NATO defence ministers in Brussels. He was joined by Ukrainian President Zelensky and he was warning that as winter approaches, Russia will only step up its attacks on energy targets. Russia has increased attack on critical infrastructure and is preparing again to use winter as a weapon of war. So we must continue to step up and sustain the steady flow or weapons and ammunition to Ukraine. So the cover of Smart 7, Pete Davidson has a new hobby and the rugby world cup gets serious. Right after this. Ask Sherwin Williams during the four day super sale, October 13th through the 16th, and get 40% off paints and stains with prices starting at $26.69. That means 40% off our most popular color family, blue. 
Psychologists have found it to be soothing and relaxing, which makes it especially great for bedrooms and bathrooms. And of course, get 40% off all of our other colors. Shop the sale online or visit your neighborhood Sherwin-Williams store. Click the banner to learn more. Retail sales only. Some exclusions apply. See store for details. Welcome back. Things are getting pretty serious this weekend at the Rugby World Cup. We're into the quarterfinal stages and there are some epic battles ahead with Wales facing Argentina and England facing Fiji. On the other side of the draw, France tackles South Africa and at 8pm on Saturday night, Ireland face the All Blacks in what will be an epic contest. Ireland are currently number one in the world and unbeaten in this tournament, but captain Johnny Sexton isn't overthinking that before the game. And I haven't thought once about personally what, what the game means. It's all about the team and progressing in the, in the competition. It's not about anything personal. I've had some great battles against New Zealand over the years. What you learn is every game is, is as tough as the last, no matter what the results. And that's what we're preparing for, preparing for the toughest game we've, we've ever faced. Comedian Pete Davidson has been having a quiet life since he quit Saturday Night Live. He's even taken a break from being the go-to breakup date for celebrities, including Kim Kardashian or Emily Ratajkowski. In fact, he's had time to start a new hobby and he might have stumbled onto a gold mine. He popped up on Jimmy Fallon's show to explain his cunning plan. Listen to this, guys. So, in 2026, it'll be 20 years since the last VHS was made, right? So 20 years goes by, that's enough time for people to be like, oh, that was cool, remember? Like vinyl? Yes. So I bought all the sealed ones that exist, like three to 5,000 tapes. (laughs) You guys sound like my mom. We seem to be deep in the beefcake era of cinema, with Jake Gyllenhaal busy remaking Roadhouse as an MMA movie alongside Conor McGregor. Not to be outdone, Zac Efron and our favourite chef Jeremy Allen White have bulked up to play wrestlers in new movie The Iron Claw. Efron seems to be mainly muscle and hair now, plays one of the four wrestling Von Erich brothers in a movie that's based on a true story about a Texan wrestling family. It's due to hit cinemas in late December, but you'll smell the sweat before you see it. What do you like to do with your brothers? Together, we can do anything. We're here to restore justice to the wrestling federation that our father built with his own two hands. The hands that were passed down to us. The hands that will deliver the iron clock to you. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes and we'll give you the world. If you're listening to this podcast, you must recognize the value of asking questions. At Aramco, our questions help us engineer a better future. How can today's resources fuel our shared tomorrow? How can we deliver energy to a world that can't stop? How can we deliver one of the fuels of the future? How can we sow curiosity to harvest ingenuity? To learn more about how innovation drives us forward, visit aramco.com slash powered by how.